We made it. I died a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she's struggling. I wanted to give her a little push, but I don't want to with the with the policeman behind us. So <laughs> that is a good feeling to cross that. That's like the second major. I mean, we crossed the Mississippi with an escort before too on our first world tour. That was also pretty daggum cool. So that's it, Panama Canal. You're probably wondering what the heck happened to Costa Rica and the rest of Panama. So let's rewind a few weeks and get caught up. As we leave Nicaragua behind us to continue our ride into Costa Rica, we still get to battle the fierce headwinds for a few more days. At times it is so strong that we have to stop so it won't blow us over or into the traffic. Costa Rica is known for its abundant wildlife and its many national parks. Initially we wanted to visit one of the famous parks, but like many times before, our plans did not work out as we hoped. So instead we hook a ride off the main road and go with plan B. So this is where we stayed last night in this little reserve. We wanted to go a little further down the road to a national park, but we got in touch with them and they're completely booked out all week. We could still go in, but it's quite a ways to cycle in and we were hoping to stay the night there. They do allow overnighting in their bunk beds, but no camping. And since this week is a holiday in Costa Rica, they're totally booked out all week. So we found this place and we talked to the rangers last night and they were totally cool with us staying in the back. Good morning. Where are we? We are in Loma, some nature preserve. Behind the ranger station. Behind the ranger station. And uh, that's what we did. We stepped in the back, listened to howler monkeys. Had a nice walk, like a, about a four kilometer walk along a river. Saw a bunch of monkeys, iguanas and other critters. So anyway, we're gonna get on out of here and um, yeah, see you down the road. It's a monkey bridge. It's all them back in Palenque when we Dominica something beach. Something like that. So we got here and we looked for a place to camp. We went to three different spots, three different hostels. And finally the last one's like, just camp out on the beach, it's okay. They, 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 they used to offer camping, they don't anymore. So we camped out here on the beach. And uh, we're not the only ones. There's a Dutch couple down there. They, they got a rental uh, truck with tents on top. Man, it stormed like crazy. We had all the, the tent the out, what do you call it, I guess the outriggers to keep it from being blown over. It was, uh, it was horrible last night. I already took it all apart and made it look better, but yeah, it's uh, it was a crazy night. And we, and we had like a, we didn't realize when we said we set up in the dark, but we're like in a bowl, of course, it always happens. And yeah, it filled up in there with water. Yeah, crazy, crazy night. But anyway, we're getting moving now. So we have a tent to clean out. Yeah. Yeah, we do. It's a mud fest in here. After quickly cleaning up our tent, we're back on the road. Although our route pretty much follows along the coast, we only get a glimpse of the water every once in a while. Instead, we get to see more tropical forests, lots of palm plantations and plenty more wildlife.
It's another hot and muggy day of riding in Costa Rica. But we still managed to do some road maintenance before we arrived sweaty and tired at the beautiful Algerman campground, which is conveniently located right outside the Marino Ballena National Park. We, uh, we found packages of refried beans, and sometimes there's different things thrown in with that. So we'll get a package of that and some tortillas, and then we'll add some vegetables and some onions and some other stuff, whatever you add. I'm talking to Pitch when I say mm -hmm. whatever you add. So yeah, my helper, she puts it together, and then she brings them over to me, and I fry them up a little bit. and. Uh, yeah, it's actually a pretty good meal, and it's uh, we we get fed pretty well for what three dollars? Oh yeah, or less than three bucks? Probably less. Yeah, it's actually really good. So, yeah, and again, this is being cooked on an MSR Whisperlite International. Everybody seems to think you can't cook with them, only for boiling water. I mean, we do pretty well with our meals. So, uh, of course, you gotta just because this sucker gets really hot too. So it's like I hold it back here and just do one at a time up here. Yeah. And that's what we're having for lunch today here in Costa Rica. After a short relaxing downtime at the campground, we are ready to hit the road again. We leave just in time for the rainy season to kick in to cool us down as we head further south toward the Reserva Forestal Golfe Dulce Nature Preserve. The route starts off on busy highways, but eventually we turn off onto quieter roads until we end up in a small town where the pavement ends and a ferry takes us across the river to the nature preserve.
This is like the hardest 13 miles we have done since, well, Guatemala for sure. Holy cow, man. I think what's getting us here too is the heat. We didn't, I mean, it was, I'm trying to remember if it was warming, but I don't think it was this hot for sure in Guatemala. Oh man, we're getting our butts handed to us today. Ah, yeah, Petra's going from shade to shade up the hill pushing. I'm trying to ride. I think we're on the last mile and it's downhill to the uh, to the water. And then for the next 24 miles till we get to the port. I forget the name of the port. I'll put it here. Um, we'll stay the night and then tomorrow cross over. And then we're only like 30 miles, 34 miles, I think, from the uh, Panamanian border. So I don't know if we'll cross over tomorrow or what. We'll see. Whew. It's beautiful back here. Um, but man. Anyway. I gotta go up the hill. See that scenery behind me? It's pretty. All right, see ya. Hey there, good morning. So, we're, we left uh, Puerto Jimenez this morning on a ferry over to Golfito. Cost us 4,000 each. It's all good, about a 30 minute boat ride. Today we're gonna, we got about 34 miles I think, maybe 35 to the border with Panama. So, it looks fairly flat. Um, nothing like it was yesterday. Yesterday was, a, was something else, man. That 13 miles to going through that preserve. Whew. Good Lord. That was tough. So anyway, going down the road, admiring the scenery. Hope you enjoy it as well. See ya. You have to go over to one of the yellow buildings over here there's two different spots and you pay your exit tax there then you come back over here before going there all right we are officially in panama we went through the second checkpoint where they just waved us right through. Usually I guess they check passports again. They just waved us through. So we are definitely in, probably a half mile, a mile in. When you exit Costa Rica, you have to first pay your exit tax, which is $9 per passport. You do that across the street at the yellow building. There's two windows uh, from the immigration side. So you pay, go there first, pay your exit tax, keep the receipt, Cross back across the street, get your exit stamp, and then you go to Panama. So, anyway, it's all good. I'll tell you, we love Costa Rica. We'll be back to Costa Rica for sure. There's, there's Mexico, Costa Rica. Yeah, very nice. So, anyway, let's see what uh, Panama's got to offer, huh?
So what'd you think of this place? I think it's beautiful. It's very rejuvenating and calming and the view is very awesome off the river. Yeah. Yeah, Roberto and Arthur yeah. are the two two guys running the joint. Hopefully it picks back up for him. This place is beautiful. It's super nice. They're super welcoming oh. and yeah. let us sleep under the little palapa down there and yeah. Yeah, the bathrooms were spotless. Oh, yeah. The shower was awesome. <laughs> the shower was awesome. <laughs> All righty. It was very nice. Yeah, See you, you down the road. A ride update here from Highway 5 down in Panama. This has been a really, really beautiful road. Um, we've had maybe three dozen cars pass us, but it's been quiet. You hear the birds. We got freaking soaked earlier. Hang on, you got water spots on you. I had to repair Petra's front brake. Tearing apart the brakes, replacing them next. You got nothing left. But it has been a really, really pretty ride. If you're coming this way and you want to change of scenery, not that Highway 1 is bad, it's beautiful too, but a lot more traffic. You know, you're out there on the main road, you got a huge shoulder. I mean, it's totally fine. But take that right hand turn on Highway 5. It's, it adds a little bit to the overall trip down to Panama City itself. The climbing is roughly the same, I believe, between whether you stayed on one or you take five and then where they come back together in Santiago. Uh, I think the climbing is negligible. I mean, it's pretty close to the same. This does add about 15 miles, or I think that's roughly, what, 25 kilometers to the overall trip. But it's so beautiful back here. It's worth it. Um, yeah, because either way, you're doing the climbing. So you can either do it out there on the highway with trucks passing you and buses and at 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, or out here where typically they're doing 30 a lot of guys on horses, a lot of cowboys, or I don't know if they're called cowboys in Panama, but with, their, with rounding up their herds. And you seem to be doing really well today on your climbing. Uh, it's because we ate all the food. Yeah. I have no food in my panniers. <laughs> so that's the combination. Ron, you carry everything plus a little bit of food, and Petra doesn't carry any food but just her stuff. It's all good. I'm obviously the stronger rider up the hills. Not that I enjoy it, but... Yeah, and these climbs are nothing compared to like what you've done. If, if you've come this far and you've gone through Guatemala. Anyway, we got about, I think, 11 miles to go to we're in, um, where we're going, Sanyo, Sanya? Sanya. Sanya for tonight. And uh, yeah, so let's get it, huh? I think we're done with the major climbing from here. It's pretty much downhill for the next so many miles. So let's do it, huh? If they were ripe, you would not go hungry, that's for sure. There's just mangoes galore. This is something you don't see every day. Very common in our childhood, but new generations have no idea what this is. This is a phone booth. This is what you people used to go to to call people. Our relaxing detour along Highway 5 is coming to an end as we merge back onto Highway 1 in San Diego.
for the next several days traffic is very heavy and we spend most of our time cycling in torrential downpours. Despite the heavy traffic, all the drivers are still pretty courteous and give us plenty of room. But we still end up getting soaked even when it's not raining by the never-ending string of passing buses and semi-trucks. going north from the city goes on like that for miles and miles and miles crazy so we uh, were on the road at 6 30 this morning after I repaired a flat and replaced a screw in Petra's rack her rear rack um, yeah, we lost one of those yesterday somewhere so yeah we're gonna try to uh, across the Panama Canal here in about two and a half miles. Sometimes they let cyclists cross the bridge, you know, sometimes they won't let you. So we'll see, hopefully uh, they let us cross. Two days ago, our friend Eric crossed. Traffic is real light right now, so we're hoping, we've gone by a couple police already and they just, they just looked at us. So I'm assuming they would have stopped us at this point. So wish us luck, huh? This is, uh, it's like the final few kilometers of uh, North America. And uh, yeah, we're going to be changing our route, so stay tuned for that. After after Santiago, about three days ago, four days ago, I don't remember now. Man, the shoulder's been horrible. The traffic's been heavy. Uh, not very pleasurable, trust me. Anyway, keeping an eye on Petra. She's behind me. And I'm looking for manhole covers missing, which would ruin your day. All right, let's see. Uh, Fingers crossed, man, that we make it across the bridge on the bicycles, not uh, not in a car. See ya. We made it. I died a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she's struggling. I wanted to give her a little push, but I didn't want to put the, put the policeman behind us. So <laughs> that is a good feeling to cross that. That's like the second major. I mean, we crossed the Mississippi with an escort before too on our first world tour. That was also pretty daggone cool. So that's it, Panama Canal. Ooh. Eric, yeah, I know how you felt now. It's exhilarating, man. It is so cool. This is to you, bud. <laughs> we'll see you later today for some beers. So. That was awesome. That's it. That's a way to end uh, the North American trip right there. Wow. Ooh. It's so cool. I'm so glad that police went behind us. That was nice. Yeah. Nice. All of the drivers would have been okay. I'm glad the police was there because I may have pushed Peter a little bit faster to get up the hill. So, it's either that or I tried recruiting a bunch of dogs to chase us. That's as fast as I could go, sorry. When dogs chase, it's like freaking speed demon. Anyway, 
All right, we're gonna finish up. We're gonna go have breakfast. It is 7.18. And it probably took us, I don't know, 10 minutes to cross, maybe about, a, it's just over a mile, so. Anyway. All right, see ya. Surprisingly, our ride into the city is much more relaxing as we find our way onto beautiful bike paths and eventually to our Airbnb where we'll stay for the next few days to explore everything that Panama City has to offer and to meet up with an old cycling friend. Thank you for riding along with us on our adventure. If you enjoyed the journey, don't forget to roll over the like button and subscribe for more cycling content. Remember, your feedback fuels our creativity, so please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Keep pedaling, keep exploring, and until next time, ride safe and stay adventurous. See you on the next ride.